I'd like to show you this Marvin Ultimate Casement. I want to show you how to adjust it, why you need to adjust it, how to replace some components on it, and how to basically tear the window apart. And I also want to show you a few features on this window you may not know about. So let's get started. So one of the first things you need to do is if you see any of these little red tabs, you need to remove these. These are your shipping blocks. I don't know how many job sites I've gone to where I just open up this window and I just remove these and it takes care of all the operational issues with the casements. So open your windows and you need to remove all those first. Now let's get to the why you would need to adjust this window. So say if you've had some settling, had an earthquake, uh, poor installation, uh, these hinges are adjustable so you can kind of take the sash and square up the sash inside of this frame. So if you follow this line, and I'll put an insert video here so you can see a closer look, you'll see there's a, how this is like this and how it gets tighter and tighter. And then you look here, the, there's an excessive gap here as you follow this all the way down. And then at the bottom, there's a pinch point and it gets bigger over here. So by adjusting the hinges, you could take this sash and square it up inside of this frame. Now, this does not substitute for a poor installation job. There's still limitations to it. So let me show you how to adjust these hinges. So one of the first things to do is go ahead, and unlock your window and crank it open. And then you're going to take your adjustment wrench. Uh, not every window comes with one of these. Uh, I believe one in five windows comes with these. So if you order at least five Marvin windows in the hardware bag, you should have at least one of these. And it's going to be labeled hinge side and lock side. I'll show you what this lock side is for later. Yeah, but the hinge side actually goes underneath this pivot here. And you can adjust the sash left and right. And what that's going to allow you, I'll put an insert shot up here, what it looks like to move that hinge. And what that'll do is that'll allow you to take the sash and move it like this. So you can actually do this or this by turning this one and this one. So since our window was down like this, we want this window to come back up. So I'm going to go ahead and move this back and I'm going to put it at the neutral point. And then on the top one, I'm going to move it back to the neutral point and then now I'm going to go ahead and close the window and I'm going to check the gap all the way around it, which we call the reveal. So let's do that. So let's go ahead and check the gap. Now, as you can see, this is more consistent all the way around. There's an even gap or what we call the reveal all the way around it. So now you successfully squared up your sash inside of the frame. So now I'd like to show you a feature about this window. If you unlock your window and crank it open in two turns and you press here, where it says press here, that allows that to go freely. And then you can swing this back out of the way. And now you can take the sash with two hands and you can continue to open it. And now this puts it in wash mode. So that means you, from the inside of your house, you can actually wash your window. I don't know if they showed you that, but that's pretty cool in my in my book, especially if you have a two-story house. And then just to put it back, just go all the way back like that and crank this out, push it back down where it says press here. I'll show you a shot of what that looks like. Back just like that and there you go. Now one thing I will, sh I will tell you, if you open your window about 45 degrees and you press here, it's not going to release. It only allows you up to about, say, this point. To release this hardware so just a quick note on that now if you ever have one of these where this arm keeps coming out like this and it detaches from this track just simply take this arm and bend it up like that so it sits above this track and then you can where it says press here press on that like that and then reinstall that Now, if you want to know how to remove the sash, I'm going to put a link in the description below on a video I've already done on how to remove this. And I'll also put at the end of the video a link on the end of the video you can click on that'll take you straight to that video. Now, I told you I would tell you what the lock side on this was for. So, in that package, will come with one of these wrenches that your hardware comes in with the window. 
It also is going to come, come with a little plastic butterfly handle. This is not it, but a little plastic butterfly handle is so you don't have to use these and lose these and have these grow legs and walk off your job site. So what you can do is you can use the little butterfly um, handle to open your window and you could also use the side that says lock that will fit over your lock so during construction you can lock and unlock your windows and you don't have to lose one of these. Now I don't remember if Marvin still does but they Marvin with the same package that would come with this wrench they would give you one of these that is unfinished so you can use one of these to lock and unlock it I'm not sure if they still do that anymore or if I think the purpose of this wrench was so you don't have to use or they have to send one of these unfinished. But that is what that's for. It's very handy and it'll help keep your window true during construction and keep it from warping and twisting. Now I'd like to show you how to remove these hardware covers and that's going to expose you to the hardware so you can replace the hardware and also to expose you to some installation holes. So say if you got this trick stain job that you're doing and you don't want to drive a, uh, a pin nail through your shim or screw through your shim to keep the window secure, these covers come off so you can hide those screws. So I want to show you how to take these off. Okay, first go ahead and we're going to unlock the window. Then we're going to open the window. And my number one and two favorite tool is, is my sharpened thick putty knife. And what that's going to do is that's going to help me get in this gap to remove these covers. If they're dull, you can actually damage the wood a little bit. So by keeping them sharp, you can wiggle things around a little bit to give you a little gap and we'll go ahead and pop these off. Okay, we'll start with the bottom cover. We'll go ahead and sometimes you can just wiggle this a little bit and put this little putty knife in here and you can help take this off. And on this, we use the kerf and barb system where these are little arrows on here and it's like a friction fit and these come right off and you can even take these out of here which you're going to want to do because when you take this one off you don't want this to hit this one here with this top cover sometimes you can wiggle it and you can see there's a slight gap here and we can go ahead and pull this off and set it to the side now we can go ahead and pull this one off same thing put your putty knife in here like this and just work it in there now the cover you may have on your window is different from this. This is the upgraded solid wood cover. This is an upgrade. So what you have on your window, I can almost guarantee is not gonna look like this one. Now you can remove this one. Same thing, this is the upgraded solid wood cover. Uh, the one you have is more likely gonna be vinyl wrapped with wood and you can actually twist it. They're actually pretty strong, but this is an upgrade. What you have may not look like that. Okay, with that removed, you can see there's pre-drilled holes here. And now you can actually secure the window by putting a screw all the way through on your shims. This one actually has installation brackets, but I wanted to show you those. Now I want to show you how to replace this lock base. This is the piece that these two pieces go on. So just to give you a visual of what that looks like behind the lock, that goes in there like that. And then that snaps in there like that. Also, that little snap you heard is these little two things here, these two little grooves, actually, there's two little clips here that snap onto that. So that's that little snap that you heard. Just like that. And if you ever have to replace it, just take the new one, and it goes in here like this. And as, obviously, you can see there's a curve there and a hole, and it goes in there like that. Now, I have seen where one of these lock bases is crooked a little bit and you try to put this piece on and it doesn't go on because this isn't sitting flush. Sometimes you, this piece here may have been put on slightly off at the factory. So I'm going to show you how to take off this tie bar and this and if you have to replace all of this. Now, when you order a new tie bar, this little piece here, I don't know if you can see it, it, there's a little plastic piece that holds this so it's lined up center. So at the time of production or at the time you put it on, it keeps this lined up. And then when you actually 
hook up your lock base and you lock and unlock your window, this little piece here will snap and then allow it to go free. Now I have seen in, in the past where this could be crooked or hang up. And if this is in the way, don't be afraid to take it off. If it in interferes with the locking of, of your window or the operation, just pop it off there just like that. We're pretending we got a new tie bar. We're gonna go ahead and make sure all these holes line up with the old holes. And they do use the same screws for the lock base and all of these. We'll go ahead and put this on there. See how this has got a, a spot for this to go in that hole and make sure it goes on like this. So when you put your cover on, it clips on there like that. So that's gonna go in there like that. We're gonna slide this bar up, make sure that sits flush, has to sit flush. just like that. Before we put our hardware covers on, I want to show you how to lube the hardware for easier locking. Now you can do this with these hardware covers installed and from the back side you can spray it in there. But since we got these off, I want to show you some areas where to spray. So some key areas are going to be here and here on this one on the top and bottom and then this little area here because this has got two little hooks to help keep this stay in a positive position so it'll snap there and there sometimes sheetrock dust gets in there so since this is off again you can do it with the hardware covers on i'm just going to spray a little tri-flow that's what i like to use now before you do this make sure that your unit is painted or stained because if you spray some of this on there and you get over spraying your wood your wood will not take paint or stain so very important that you wait till everything is paint, painted and stained like that and you can, we can work the hardware a little bit and then we'll spray it the top as well now it's time to reinstall the hardware covers okay, now it's time to install the lock and excussion it's got these little clips instead of just forcing it in there I always try to like start on the top or the bottom and then push it in there like that and then you can take your lock put it on there until you hear a snap like that. Make sure it's all the way up when you open your window. If it's sitting like this and you close your window, the window may not close all the way. Now it's time to install the cover and crank handle. But before we install this, I want to go ahead and crank the window all the way shut to where it stops. And we're not forcing it, just to where it stops. And we can go ahead and set this cover. Now some of these come in metal and I've had complaints where people said they're pushing it on, they push it on, they can't get it on there. If you just get one of these hooks started in here on one side like this, and on the metal cover, this one's actually like that. And if you give it a pop, real hard with your, your palm, this will actually snap on. I know a lot of people are afraid to do that. So now, just don't put your crank on like that. Actually make sure the window is shut all the way, take it off, put it back on to where this lines up the best it can. So we'll move, we'll move it one, two, four. It's never 100% perfect, but you want it to be close enough. Because if you were to take this off and just put it like this, and you go to crank the window, of course it's gonna fold this way, and the people will try to force it this way, which could damage the roto gear, or some part of the mechanism. So, just like that. And we'll go ahead and tighten that screw. I want to show you something on how to get your window to lock a little easier. So there is a difference between your window being shut and the window being locked, especially during construction. Uh, when these are in a house that's under construction and they're mudding and they're putting texture in the house, the humidity in the house shoots up to 100%. And oftentimes these windows and doors are not painted immediately and they soak up a lot of moisture. So when you go to lock this window, it's going to be super stiff. Usually if you just leave the window locked for a few weeks after the people move in and give it some time to acclimate, it helps. But let's say if you got that one room where uh, it's a little kid's room or someone who's elderly or got arth really bad arthritis and they have, they're really struggling with this lock. I wanna show you a couple things you can do to this keeper and to get this window to lock a little easier. I'm gonna do two things. One, I keep a whole bunch of these washers on my truck. And what I can do is I'm gonna go ahead and I can take this take it off and put a couple washers behind this. And this is gonna allow this to go into the window a little more for it to lock a little easier. And then I'm gonna show you something else. 
As you can see here on this keeper, there's this little black plastic piece in here. This actually rotates, so when you lock the window, that tie bar that's back there actually rolls on this. So by putting some lube on this, and then working that in there so that spins a little easier, that's gonna help with the locking. Okay, now so I'm gonna take this keeper and I'm gonna go ahead and put the screws in there like that. And then I got these little washers and I'm gonna go ahead and put that behind this. And then I'm gonna go ahead and reinstall it. Be very mindful not to put it on the wrong way. If you have one of these windows that doesn't lock, check to see if the painter take, took these off and put them on backwards. They should not be pointing this way. They should always be pointing to the lock side of the window. There you go. That should make this lock a little easier. But only do this in the last resort because the further you shim this into the house, the less compression that the sash is going to have with the weather stripping. So say if you're in a really high wind or high rain area, um, you may not want to do this because you really want good contact with the sash and the frame weather stripping. So I'm going to go ahead and close this and try this lock. Wow, that locks really smooth. Now one other question you may have, can I replace the glass? Well, yes and no. Uh, if you order this with the SDL bars on there, forget about trying to replace this, the glass. Uh, we tell you to order a whole new sash because it's going to be factory sealed and things just will fit better. The, the sash will be square and you can almost guarantee a good fit. Uh, if you have to replace the glass, I will put a link in the description below of a video I did on how to do that. And also at the end of the video, I'll put a link on the end of the video you can click on to show you how to replace this glass if you absolutely have to. But I always recommend if you have to, go ahead and just order a new sash. It's just so much easier that way. Well, that was the Marvin Ultimate Casement. Hopefully you found this video informative and it'll help you out when you go out and adjust your Marvin casement on your next job site. And if you found this video informative, please consider hitting the subscribe button below. And I greatly appreciate it. Thank you for watching and have a great day.